my top 10 tips for Microsoft Outlook. Let's get into it. So today we are going to take a look at the top 10 tips that I have for you for Microsoft Outlook. If you find this video useful and informative, hit that like button, I really do appreciate it. And of course, if you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with all of the hints and tips that we have here at That Office Guy, then do consider subscribing to the channel. By subscribing, you will be kept up to date with everything we do here at That Office Guy. With that being said, uh, let's jump on down to Microsoft Outlook and see exactly what's going on here with these top 10 tips. Fantastic. Right, so the very first tip that I have for you guys is all about polls. This is actually a relatively a new feature that has been released of late. And ultimately, you're able to, instead of doing votes where you kind of put a vote out into an email, you can now actually include a poll. In order to do this, you head over to the ribbon here and you click on the Insert tab. From the insert tab you'll find that there is a new option called poll if you do not have this uh, then actually your first thing you need to do is actually go to file go to your account and then check for any updates once you've updated your microsoft outlook you'll be able to find this poll here as long as you have the 365 license right let's go ahead and click on poll and this will open up a new section just over here on the right hand side this will allow us to basically create a question and have multiple different answers. And basically it's like a mini Microsoft form embedded into your email. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So we'll go with, is this video any good? Question mark. First answer will be yes. We'll click on no. We'll add an option down here for somewhat. Okay, and if you would like multiple multiple answers, you can toggle this button here for multiple. I'll leave it as uh, just a straight out one answer will do, and we'll click next. We'll say this is what it will look like, um, a quick poll from inside your email. We're gonna add that. There we go. So now it's been added to the email, we'll have uh, this little embed, and basically it's like a link that you click on, and that takes you to a browser. So is this video any good? We'll go ahead and uh, click on this. It will open up in a browser for us, and here, we can enter our answers. So we'll have a yes, and then we can just put in the email address. So we'll go nick at that office guy.com and we'll click on vote. My answer has come up yes, and we can see all the results there. So that's the very first tip that I have for you guys. It's quite straightforward. You'll be able to add polls into your emails within just a few clicks. Next tip that I have for you guys is dark mode. And in order to activate dark mode within the desktop application, we want to head over to file and down to office account. From here, there's something called office theme. And uh, by default, this is actually selected as colorful, but we want to change that into a dark theme. So if we choose that option there, there's actually two dark options. There's dark gray, and if we click on that, it turns everything into a nice dark gray. But if you want things to be uh, a little bit darker and more representing of a dark mode, we click on black. With black selected, we're able to actually experience this entire application within that dark mode theme. And obviously it uh, basically just makes it a little bit easier on your eyes. And that's how you would go about activating dark mode for Outlook. But in doing so, you're actually adjusting all of the Microsoft Office applications as well. So your Outlook um, along with Excel, Word, PowerPoint, etc., they are all in dark theme. Now, obviously, if you go and open up a new email from here, you can switch that background and you can toggle the email body into a white email body or switch it back into a dark mode there as well. So you do get a little bit of flexibility here if you would actually like to have your email body in white rather than in black. And you get that functionality from that option there. So the next tip that I have for you guys is email signatures. Again, we'll click on a new email. And then from here, there's a thing called signatures under the include options. If we choose this, uh, we can see there's a new option for signatures here. We give that a click and we're able to see all of the existing signatures as well as any ones that we may wish to create. So if we click on create new and we'll just type in a test uh, signature here, click OK. And then we can adjust this signature as needed down here. So here is a 
test. And we could obviously put in a bunch of numbers and a email address or two. So very straightforward to do there. And obviously you can make these um, signatures as elaborate as you would like. You'll be able to create multiple different kinds of signatures for different kinds of scenarios. You could have a new message um, with a specific signature or a reply and forward signature as well. And again, once you're inside that email, if I click OK on this one, we can change the signature as needed. If I wanted to include it, it's a one-click solution and it is there. So a really straightforward and neat little way to add multiple different signatures and then include the different signatures as required within your emails. And hopefully, guys, you find that useful. Right, the next tip that I have for you guys is all around how to stop those rather irritating email noise and alerts. This is actually quite a simple one to turn off and will help prevent all those annoying distractions. So in order to do this, we're gonna head over to File, we're gonna go down to Options, and then from here, we're gonna click on the Mail option on the left of our section here. From here, we're going to scroll down a little bit until we find that Message Arrival. Here we can see lots of different options. We have the play sound, briefly change the mouse pointer, um, show an envelope icon in the taskbar, and even display a desktop alert. Now, if we don't want those annoying noises all the time, we can turn off the play a sound option. We can turn off the uh, envelope icon and also uh, disable those desktop alerts. Now, personally, I really do like the envelope in my taskbar, but the sound is just a bit frustrating and I don't need that. Likewise, I do not need those desktop alerts. So I'm gonna select just to keep the envelope icon on. But if you wanted to adjust this and change it uh, to your own personal preferences, this is where that option will be found. Straight into file, into options, and then select the mail option here and find message arrival. With all that done, we can click okay. And now I will not be getting those frustrating noises in my Microsoft Outlook. So guys, the next tip that I have for you is all about rules. As you can see with this inbox, it is cluttered up with lots of messages from Microsoft 365 Center. So ultimately, this is very frustrating and I need to clean this up quite a bit. So in order to do this, I'm going to use the rules within Microsoft Outlook to basically automatically file away all of these messages. Now, the first thing I need to do is actually create a new account um, or a new folder, I should say, within my um, inbox here, just so that I can, you know, file things away. So straight away, you can see I have a Microsoft folder, and I'm going to use that as uh, my location to store everything in. So with that being done, it's already created. What I'm going to do is now set up that rule. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this particular message just here, this message from Microsoft 365 Message Center. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and I'm going to go to rules. I'm going to create a rule. From here, we get this little pop-up box. And there are lots of different ways you can create these. The simplest way is to use this option just here. You can go into the advanced options, which is my preferred method, but I'm going to keep it simple for this tutorial. So I'm going to say every message from Microsoft 365 Message Center, I'm going to tick that box there, and I'm going to want to do something with it. I want to basically move it into its own little folder. So I'm going to choose uh, the Microsoft folder that I have created with inside my inbox, and I'm going to click OK. From here, now every message that comes from Microsoft 365 Message Center will move automatically into the Microsoft folder. Now, of course, you might want to also just, um, you know, actually only mark them as red as well. So if we go over to the advanced options, this is where you can see all of the various different options that you can set things up for. So in this particular case, you can see how I already have apply this rule after a new message arrives from Microsoft 365 Center and then move it to the Microsoft folder and then stop processing more rules. Well, actually what I want to do is I want to mark it as red. So in order to do this, I need to find the mark as red option. Now you're not gonna find it in the step one. Instead, you wanna to have to go over to step two. From step two, this shows you more options. We don't want to delete it or anything like that, but we do want to mark it as red. So we're gonna find the mark as red option, which is just down here. So now when a, say, a new email arrives, it's from Microsoft 365 Center, we're gonna move it to the Microsoft folder and mark it as red. And then we're gonna stop processing any rules. From there, I'm gonna click on done and we we'll just have to check that. There we go. Now it's not going to run on old emails. It's only going to run on your kind of pre uh, or any new emails that arrive. But if you wanted to run it, you can come here 
you can go to manage rules, you'll find your rule just here and you can actually run the rule now. You can choose the rule and then you can run now and it's going to file through everything in my inbox and sort it all out for me. I can close that, I can click OK and now my inbox is manageable. Right guys, the next tip I have for you is all about flagging items and they automatically will appear in your to-do. But of course, to-do tasks are fantastic, however, it actually now has additional functions. You can actually mark things as to-do tasks and then automatically have them inside Microsoft Teams. If that's where you're doing majority of your work, which I believe most people are these days, then actually it's fantastic to be able to flag your emails and have them appear as tasks inside Microsoft Teams. So in order to do this, it's actually a quite a straightforward process. You find your invoice here in this particular case, and I'll go ahead and flag it. With it being flagged, that now has created that inside Microsoft um, To Do, which then in turn has moved it into Microsoft Teams via the Planner app. So this is a fantastic way to just kind of add ad hoc emails directly into tasks. Of course, you could also drag and drop these into your to-do and that will also have the same effect. So this is just a nice, neat and fantastic way to pull everything together and uh, put it all into your to-do tasks. Right, the next thing that we wanna talk about guys is all about mentions. If I create a new email here, we now have the ability to at mention certain people. And this is a new function and uh, basically you can just go at and I can go Chris and we can find Chris in here. And straight away, Chris is automatically then added to my to field. So email knows that basically because I've at mentioned him, he should probably actually receive the email. So it's a nice and neat function. And again, I can then say, do uh, what do you think? And I can ask him a simple question. And it, basically it's a nice fun way to make sure that they get a certain message and they know that this particular line of the email is about them. This is an awesome uh, new function for Microsoft Outlook and it really does help with uh, you know addressing certain individuals. Now, obviously when it comes to app mentions, you can also do searches for these as well. So if you wanted to do a search, you can now search for anything that uh, you've been mentioned in. So another nice, neat way to, uh, to actually see whether you've been mentioned in a particular email. So another fantastic feature from Microsoft Outlook. Now, the next thing that we want to talk about here and the next tip has to be those autoresponders. If you're out of office and you need to send an out of office email response, they're quite straightforward to set up. You head over to the file option here and you go down to the automatic replies. By clicking automatic replies, you have the ability to send between a specific time which is usually my preferred option. This way you can set things up in advance. Of course, you can just come into here, change when you would like to start sending your out of office replies. So I'm gonna select the 12th of April. I'll obviously select the 18th. I'm gonna be away for an entire week there. And I'm gonna start this thing from 9 a.m. through to, uh, let's say 5 p.m. And again, I have the ability now to say I am out of office here. And also if um, I wanted to send an email separately to anyone outside of my organization rather than inside the organization, I can write a specific reply to these guys as well. Also, out of office. And of course you can get as creative as you would lead. Now you click OK and you're automatically set up and good to go. There's no extra work needed. And uh, it's as simple as that to set them up. You can click back in here and you can adjust these as needed. I can turn them off as well as that's what I desire to do. So out of office replies are very straightforward to set up and you can get as creative with those as you need. Right, the next option, one of my personal favorites when it comes to Microsoft Outlook, and that has to be the delay delivery. So let's say we have an email here and we want to send it to, let's say Chris again. I'll send it to Chris. And what we're gonna do is, um, you know, we want to make him understand that this is important and that we've been working for hours upon hours upon hours on doing it rather than maybe playing video games. So in that case, what we want to do is we want to send this email out of hours so he knows that we've been working on this piece of work for a long time. In order to achieve this, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go over to the options here and then we're gonna go on delay delivery. From the delay delivery, we get to choose exactly when we would like to send it. So for example, we could select a day and we can select a time. So ultimately guys, this is a nice neat way where I can come in here and say, I'm gonna send it at 17.05 
or today, and he'll know that I'm supposed to have finished at five. Therefore, I stayed five minutes behind to do this crit critical piece of work just for him. There's no save option, guys. You just literally click close and that is all toggled up and ready to go. So the second that you click on save, it will wait until 5.05 and then send the email. So it's a nice, nice, neat little feature that really gets the message across sometimes. If you're working a lot out of hours and uh, you, know, you want to kind of push a point here, you can use the delay delivery to really stress and emphasize how late you've actually been working. Or just for fun, if you're getting loads of emails at midnight and you want to get a bit of own back, then you know, ultimately that's a nice, neat feature. Of course, guys, sometimes the last feature that we need to be talking about has to be offline mode. Sometimes you might think, why would you want to work offline? Well, actually, it's just a nice way to prevent your email box from cluttering up whilst you're trying to work on slimming that email box down. Now, I have lots of different ways and different approaches to managing emails, but sometimes the offline mode is just helps that extra little bit. So in order to activate this, what we want to do is we actually want to go over to the send and receive option here and click on work offline. When you click on that work offline, you will notice that down at the bottom here, where it actually now says work offline. Now, what that means is no new email messages will be received in this inbox. So if you're doing things like a mail merge or you're wanting to verify all of the emails that you have, you can click on the work offline and your email box will stay as is until you're ready to receive more emails. This is a great way if you're wanting to focus down and get a lot done without getting bogged down with new additional emails. So once you're finished though, guys, all you have to do is simply toggle it off and it will connect you back to the Microsoft Exchange and you're good to go and all those new emails will come flooding back in. And guys, those are my top 10 tips for Microsoft Outlook. And hopefully you did find this useful. If you did, then do go ahead and hit that like button. I really do appreciate it. And of course, if you want to stay up to date with all of those hints and tips that we do here at That Office Guy, then do consider subscribing to the channel. By subscribing, you're going to be kept up to date with everything we do here at That Office Guy. And with this said, we hope you have a fantastic day and we'll catch you all in the next one.